This video, produced by World Coffee Research, is part of a five-part series supporting the Uganda Coffee Development Authority's Clonorobasta Coffee Nursery Manual for establishment of coffee nursery. The role of the mother garden is to provide a continuous source of shoots that will be cloned to generate rooted cuttings. This process ensures the genetic quality of the material that is being distributed and helps maintain the characteristics of the variety throughout generations. These are the key steps for the successful establishment of the mother garden. Step 1. Selection of the site of the mother garden. Step 2. Field preparation. The area where a mother garden is to be established must be well prepared and existing trees should be ringed back at least one year before planting in order to prevent infestation by root rot disease. Step 3. Layout of the mother garden. An ideal mother garden should be divided into blocks. Each block should have different variety of clonal mother plants spaced at 1 meter by 1 meter with banana grown in between as intercrops at a spacing of 3 meter by 3 meter. Step 4. Digging holes. It is recommended that holes are dug at least 3 months before the planting season. Dig holes of 2 feet wide by 2 feet long or 2 feet in diameter and 2 feet deep at marked spots. Step 5. Back feeding holes. Mix the topsoil with a basin full of well decomposed manure and refill the holes with topsoil at least one month before planting. Step 6. Sourcing and planting of mother plants. It is recommended to use authorized well labeled plantlets after seeking guidance from the agriculture authority in your area. Nurseries need to select the best coffee clones for planting in a mother garden. To do this, get mature clonal coffee seedlings with three to four pairs of leaves. Avoid plantlets with signs of pests like root milk bugs, aphids, and other insects, and disease, especially brown eye leaf spot. Twisted roots and all roots protruding outside the polypot and a height above 1.5 feet tall as these are overgrown and may not establish well. After selecting the clones, it is time for planting. Step 1. Soak the plantlets to loosen the soil in the polypot before planting. Step 2. Place the plantlet in the east-west sunrise sunset direction. Step 3. Open up the center of the backfield hole to sufficiently accommodate the size of the potted plantlet. Step 4. Trim the bottom part of the roots and those protruding beyond the polythene pots before planting. Step 5. Remove the polythene pots before planting by gently inverting the fully soaked plantlets in your hands and pulling off the poly bag. Step 6. Place the plantlet in the hole with a collar at about 2.5 cm above soil level. Step 7. Apply 50 grams of diammonium phosphate within the root zone of the plantlet to stimulate root development. Avoid putting fertilizer in direct contact with the plant to avoid fertilizer scorching the plant. Step 8. Fill in the soil and press it firmly around the newly planted plantlet using your hands. Step 9. Protect each plant from sunshine by providing a temporary shade. For example, banana leaves, tree branch, or palm tree fronds. Step 10. Mulch the entire row immediately after planting to conserve moisture, prevent weed growth, and reduce soil erosion. If mulch is not sufficient, place a ring of mulch around the plantlet. 
but this must not be in contact with the plant. This can be done by providing cover at the base of the planted mother plant, mulch with split banana pseudo stems. Step 11. In cases where labeled mother plant blocks are separated by a 2 meter spacing, it is recommended to intercrop bananas for shade at a spacing of 3 meter from one banana stool to another. Once the mother garden has been planted, nurseries need to make sure to take good care of plants so they will remain productive for many years. To do this, consider the following practices. 1. Weed management. Weeds compete with plants for water and nutrients and should therefore be properly managed and adequately suppressed using culture, mechanical or chemical methods. This will help achieve maximum mother bush productivity. 2. Soil and water conservation practices. It is important to conserve soil moisture for use in the dry period and to minimize loss of soil fertility through erosion. 3. Culture practices. Follow the culture practices of planting of cover crops, grass, and trees along with mulching and manuring. 4. Training of mother plants. The term training refers to the bending of young coffee plants in an east to west direction and pegging them down at about 45 degrees to enable the orthotropic stem to produce suckers from which harvesting of cutting is done. 5. Nutrition and fertilizer management practices. It is recommended that manure or fertilizers be applied to replenish the nutrients as per the results soil or leaf analysis. Management of shade trees. Periodic pruning of shade trees helps maintain a balance of shade and light. Avoid excessive shade since it retards suckers growth and thus reduces the yield of cuttings. Pre-harvest and post-harvest practices of suckers. The harvesting of suckers should be done when the internodes have reached a size of pencil thickness in diameter and internode length range of between 7 cm to 9 cm. Certification of clonal copy mother gardens and nurseries. You may be able to receive a certificate from your national coffee authority after assessment of your mother garden and or nursery. We recommend you check with your local institution regarding certification. To learn more about the establishment of clonal coffee nurseries, you can consult the clonal robusta coffee nursery manual from UCDA. Remember, a healthy and well-established clonal mother garden can help ensure the productivity and profitability of a coffee nursery in the future.